What's going on everybody, Eric Barassa here, and I am so excited to teach you one of my all-time favorite guitar riffs from definitely my favorite rock guitar album of all time. Not just rock guitar, my favorite rock album of all time. I think Third Eye Blind's self-titled album from 1997 is the single greatest rock album I've ever heard. I'd love to hear in the comments below what you think is the greatest rock album of all time. And if it's something I haven't listened to before, I'll be sure to check it out. And if you've never listened to Third Eye Blind's self-titled album all the way through, I challenge you to do so. And I think you will find it is definitely a contender for being one of the just absolute most brilliant rock albums, frontwards and backwards. But one of my favorite riffs from that album is from the single Graduate, which was featured in the movie Can't Hardly Wait, uh, starring Jennifer Love Hewitt, my my first crush uh, back in the 90s. And, but I heard this song even before that movie came out. And uh, the riff, check it out, it goes like this. All right, so that riff just totally rules. Some really interesting things about this song. Number one, it, that riff was created by Kevin Cadigan, the original guitarist for Third Eye Blind, one of my top three favorite guitar players of all time. Yes, right up there with Joe Satriani. So Joe Satriani at number one, and then Kevin Cadigan and Tom DeLonge right behind him. Uh, and what's interesting, for those of you who, who know, Kevin Cadigan was taught by Joe Satriani himself. Uh, so I think it's fascinating that they became my two favorite guitar players, um, and I had no idea there was even a, a connection there. So something in that Southern California water. Tom DeLong also from, uh, from Southern California. So anyway, we're in open D tuning. So that means you're, tune in, uh, you're tuned to D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. This creates a D chord when you strum open. So if you bar at the fifth fret, that's a G chord. Uh, if you bar at seven, you guessed it, that's an A chord. B is at nine, C is at 10, D is at 12. So you can play full on chord progression. just using uh, a bar. But Kevin Cadigan uses it to get some really interesting chord shapes. Um, so we start at the very beginning with a clean sound, and I, I advise using a compressor, because a compressor uh, pedal or plug-in on your computer will smooth out the levels of the string. So when you do this hammer-on from nowhere, um, you're gonna get a really even sound and plenty of sustain with that compressor. But I've got the compressor turned on right now in Logic, um, and we're gonna hammer on to five with that index finger. We're gonna leave it there, and then with fingers two, three, and four, you're gonna hammer on seven, eight, and nine on strings four, three, and two. Oh man, that's tough. Okay, um, and then you're going to pull off the seven, eight, nine to five. And then hammer back onto seven, eight, and nine. It's actually really hard to do slow. It's easier for me to do it faster. Okay, so we're gonna do that twice. So five. And then you'll hammer on to 777 seven, seven on the thickest three strings. Okay, so there it is slow, here it is full speed. It's giving me a little more volume and a little more sustain and it's a, a, a little bit easier to hammer on to those, those notes and get a really clear, even sound across everything. So you wanna talk about a fret hand workout? There it is right there. The good news is when the distortion kicks on, 
on that uh, last time through, when you hit that seventh fret, you're going to kick on your distortion like this. And now we're going to strum everything uh, except we're still going to do that first pull off. So we got. Okay. That riff serves as the intro as well as the chorus. So you're going to play that riff quite a bit. And there's a cool little fill that happens. Um, right at the beginning when the drums and the distorted guitar enter, there's a second guitar that plays this. So we're pulling off from nine to five on the first string, and then going to nine on the second string, back to five on the first string, nine pull off to five on the second string, back to nine on the second, and then back to five on the first string. That's really cool. I dig that. So um, instead of playing that seven, that's that's what Kevin Cadigan used to do live, um, and that's probably what what I would do live is just hit that seven. Um, but I would go. So if you had two guitar players in the band, one of you could play that while the other one's hitting the that that seven there. Okay. So then when we get to the verse, we're gonna go up to twelve. 10, 12, 5. Okay, so what's happening here is we're going to hit 12. I would use the third finger to bar 12, 12, 12. And... Kevin is kind of sporadically hitting the open first, second, and third strings. So you can do it when, however you want. I've written just a simplified version where you're hitting it on the second hit. Okay, like that. And then on the tens, you're going to go up, down, up. Then add 12 and 13 on strings four and three, respectively. Be respective. And then you can hit all the strings. How beautiful is that? I just think those chords are so cool. So really what we have there is just a D chord and then to a C with... So we've got like a D, a D, D5, and then we add the first three strings. That creates a full D chord. And then C plus those notes from the D chord it really creates like a like a C uh, C add nine sharp eleven kind of a sound. Really, really cool and colorful. And then we go back to the twelve, and then we come down to five, which is our, our G chord. And you'll add this seven on the fourth string, which makes it like an add nine. Um, so rhythmically. You want to do that rest there. So we've got one, two, three. And then we're going to rest. So you're almost never hitting the downbeat of each measure. Um, let's see. And notice I'm just hitting those open first three strings kind of whenever it suits my fancy. So I don't want you to put too much pressure on yourself to... Be like, oh, I gotta hit the opens here and then not here. It's it kind of doesn't matter. Just as long as you've got that rhythm rhythm feel and you've got the sound filled out. Okay, then the second time through we have a, a half a half note rest. So for two beats you're gonna rest. You've got one, two. Uh, eight to seven the very last time through. So so check this out. Uh, let me let me put all that together from the verse. So 
So what's really cool about that is during those rests, they're doing some really cool production things in the studio, getting some wild sounds. So it sounds like a pick scrape or some kind of a weird slide, but with some really bizarre effects on it. I honestly don't know what's happening there. If you can tell me what's happening, um, I'd be really curious to know. But for now, you could do you could either just do a full stop rest, or you could do um, you could do like a quick slide. I think that would sound really cool in a live setting. Okay, so after four times through the verse, once we come back to that eight seven. We're back to our main riff and going to the chorus. Um, and then we're going to do another verse. So nothing really changes here guitar-wise. And then we get to our bridge, which is a B chord at the ninth fret. So uh, let me turn my pedal off real quick. This is a really cool, like, uh, kind of Rolling Stones sort of thing, like doing open, open strings. I can almost guarantee you that that's where Kevin got that idea from, was from the Rolling Stones, using an open tuning and using that, that chord shape. But it works really awesome here. It sounds cool. Um, So you're just going to add the uh, 11th fret on the 5th string and then the, um, the 10th fret on the 3rd string to that 9th fret bar. Okay, we're going to play that four times and then you'll go into the solo. The solo has a little bit of variations and there's a wah pedal used. I'm not going to hook up my wah pedal right now, but um, essentially the solo is this. You're going to play this a couple of times. Okay, so after playing that twice, and by the way, that's 14 to 17 on the second string, and then on the first string, 14, 16, 14, 16, bend up a half step, release, pull off to 14, and then resolve to 17 on the second string. So we got rest, rest. You're back to nine, um, and really what you can do is just play this. But, um, he's doing some other things. So you can also play, play this. I didn't put this in the tab, but you can hold that nine on a couple of thickest strings and then add like seven and eight on strings four and th three. And then pinky comes to 10 on the third string. And then to nine. So right. you've got like. So let me put that together, starting from the big, uh, from the bridge. Right, here we got. Okay, or it, when you go here, instead of doing this, you can... I would probably do that second way, but I think either way really is, is fine. So then after you play the solo again two more times... You're gonna do this unison bend at 14 and 17 on the first two strings. Slowly release. And then on that last hit, you'll hit uh, 14 and 16 on the first two strings. So you're bending up a whole step on the second string. Slowly release. 
and then we get to this cool ramp. So uh, we're ju we just got 0530. I would start, because the open starts on an upbeat, I would start with an upstroke. I think that'll feel better. Yeah, yeah, and the, f at the first time you end it, it's just one hit of the open. The second time, it's, it's two, so. One. Two. And then we're just back to the, the main riff for the chorus, and then, and then you're out. And you gotta do the chucka chuckas there at the end. And at the very end, the very last time through, you'll go up to nine, leaving the first three strings open and then slowly slide off the fretboard. And then that's how it leads into uh, How's It Going To Be? And I love that transition between <laughs> those two songs. Uh, okay, so that's Graduate by Third Eye Blind. Let me know what you think. Be sure and like and subscribe if you dig this, if you like uh, late 90s post-rock music, whatever they called it, post-grunge, power pop. Um, and if you dig Third Eye Blind, and of course, uh, Blink 182's got some new stuff coming out, so I'll be doing every single one of those songs. Um, I got "Semi Charmed Life" by Third Eye Blind coming up next uh, in the next in the next day or so, and then um, I'm probably I think I'm going to do this entire album. So I'm starting with the singles from Third Eye Blind, self-titled. I will see you guys in the next time.